Hi, and welcome to the Divinely Inspired Woman podcast. I am your host, Patricia Wald Hopkins. I am a modern mystic, and I am here to share with you the beautiful wisdom and stories from women that desire to lead their lives inspired by the divine within them. The Divinely Inspired Woman is devoted to walking the path of her soul's calling, tuning into the divinity within to navigate life with ease and grace through all circumstances. She cultivates beauty in her daily life. She is here to share the most authentic self each day through thick and thin. So I hope you enjoy our show today and that you will leave with a, an infusion of inspiration for your soul and for your day and living your life. You're everything. Okay. All right. Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Divinely Inspired Woman. I'm Patricia Wald Hopkins, your host, and I have the most amazing and beautiful guest today, uh, Tara Preston. And she, um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her because she's she truly is a wisdom holder uh, for the divine feminine. Um, she is an authentic feminine leadership guide for way showing women of the new paradigm. She's also the founder of the Akashic Women's School. And over the last decade, she has facilitated over 6,000 Akashic record sessions. And, you know, <clears throat> pioneering the studies of the divine feminine consciousness through the Akashic and through the Akashic record work. Um, her most well-known body of work is the Flower of Life Akashic Method, which I am a big um fan of and user of it's a body-based multi-dimensional method for supporting women in living their highest expression of freedom this certification in the flower of life has been running for the last four years and has certified already over 50 women um and let's see here globally she's been supporting <laughs> women over the last decade Please, but you want to <laughs> no there's just so much goodness it has to be I have to I have to okay, share okay perfect I, I, yeah it's still yeah so she's helped um women in the last decade to rise in their embodied authentic leadership and new paradigm prosperity and birth new expressions of their evolutionary path um, including the birth of new sacred programs or businesses. And I just have to say that she's helped me so much with all of this. Um, she's the founder of the Evolutionary Mama Movement. That's exciting. Which is holding space for the new emergence of conscious mamas rising in their leadership and earth connection and integration of the divine mother consciousness. And she's got so much going on right now. I've been watching you and it's just like <laughs> blossoms all over the place. Um, she's got another new body of work coming out this year uh, on the upgrading the family matrix. And yeah, yeah. And she lives in Northern Canada, semi off grid um, on this beautiful land. I've seen pictures, 12 acres of land. Um, as a Mongolian yurt, um, and lives with her daughter and her husband of 24 years. Wow. Thank you. That yeah. was, <laughs> I didn't yeah. realize how long it was until you read it, but <laughs> that's so good. That's so, yeah. I mean, there's so much even more to share, but, but welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm always, I always love connecting with you and I had you over on my my in my community last week and now we get to meet here so yeah yeah this is wonderful and I you know these uh divinely inspired conversations they 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 wander where spirit you know wants to take mm -hmm. us but I, I really um want to give you an opportunity to um to share about what is on fire in you right now so today what what is going on in your work that's really got you inspired yeah, divinely yeah. inspired well I think even with you just reading my bio um and 
touching in on the family matrix and the rise of the divine feminine. When, as you were reading my bio, I was like, oh yeah, like I just, I love that that's where I'm at with um, a part of a body of work that I'm working on and bringing through currently. And at the same time, it's work that I've been doing a long time. Like I'd say probably the last decade, but certainly like the last like three, four five years working a lot with conscious mamas who are rising in their divine feminine leadership and really starting to see, you know, well, how, what the ripple effect is for the family matrix when that begins to happen. And, you know, I stepped into this work like fully on my sacred feminine path about, I guess it's like 11 or 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And at that time, even for me personally, I, it was really about the cultivation and connection to the feminine and what that meant to me personally, what that meant to my path, how to connect that to um, money and, and how to really carve a path that was, that was sustainable and would, would allow me to do this work in the world. So I think that in terms of like the evolution that we've seen in the world and maybe even in the online space, it's been a lot about what has that meant for us personally as women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the last, you know, three or four years working with women through transformation and, and through their evolutionary journey, I think, and, you know, if we've done this evolutionary journey at times, <laughs> right, we really start right, the spiral. <laughs> You know, we really start to see how it's an invitation for us to take up like a much fuller space in, in who we are as women and in our sovereignty and in our sexual power. Mm -hmm. And right. And if we look at the history of the feminine and the suppression of the feminine and even the role of like, like mother, there hasn't been a lot of space for that. And so as we really start to cultivate that on our evolutionary journey and really start to take up more and more space in our lives and our businesses and in our homes, it's inevitable that the family matrix has to kind of like shift and reorganize to make space for more of our feminine power. But also what I started to see was how the divine feminine consciousness really started to touch in and create a ripple effect through the home, like, in, you know, in our intimacy and in our partnerships and through the matrix of our homes. So, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. I'm Thank really you. excited about, about this work unfolding Yeah, um, for you. And I will definitely look forward to seeing how it unfolds for me as I learn from you going, going forward. What, what are some of the biggest, I mean, I know you mentioned some of the biggest challenges, yeah, that's okay, um, yeah. but if, so let's go back. Let's go back a few steps. And so we have a, let's say we have a very varied audience here for people who, you know, have been walking this, this path mm -hmm. for a mm -hmm. while. And, and those who might just be tuning in is, you know, what, what is, what are some of the challenges um, and some of the tools or shifts that are needed for people to, you know, step onto this evolutionary path of the divine feminine? yeah it's true and I can see why you would bring it back to like we're all at different kind of like spaces and, and stages and what this work would mean to us and I think you know that's for me if I look back and who I was working with a long time ago and often it was mothers who were just stepping into their sacred path and they would come to me and they would like the the common um dialogue would be there's just no space for me mm. I just don't feel like I have any space for me there's no time for me like and it was just mm -hmm. this like frustration right mm -hmm. and so and even in my own journey and, and that was you know a long time ago 10 years ago I, I had created this free gift called the radiant morning power hour mm -hmm. yes and so that was one of the first steps was always like well how can we get you to claim sacred space for you and so if that if you're a woman or a mom, a woman and a mom, you know, that's kind of, and you're feeling like that, that becomes a very important piece. It becomes an invitation to step into our sacredness, into the sacred pause, into presence, and to come home to the truth of who we are. And it's that space of presence where we start to connect to, to self and, and to the divine feminine. And there can be challenges around even just claiming that space or 
doing it regularly or committing to it because change happens from that place. Even just, yeah, at a more subtle level, just in terms of like, all of a sudden we're showing up differently and now we want to honor our boundaries. And so, right. It's like where our sacred no is. Mm -hmm. And that starts to shift our relationship down dynamics. And so sometimes the change can be just like, um, getting to know ourselves in new ways because we've said yes to ourselves, but now pushing up against, uh, relationship disharmony. And I think as we travel the, you know, the evolutionary path at this stage, that still happens, but I can recognize it and, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, recognize it and try to be a bit more present with it. And also, Um, notice that this is a part of how relationships shift to create more space for my sovereignty um, and for for my sovereignty and and more of my divine divine feminine power to take up um, space in the home. Mm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that feels good in my system. I I, I guess it kind of boils down to, um, would you say in a few words, not to be afraid of the the resistance or the discomfort that is initially present when you start to make shifts to know that's just kind of like like the growing Mm -hmm. the growth the growth right the the, yeah yeah. every woman is definitely different and some women carry a very strong vibration of like harmony and i tend to attract a lot of those women (laughs) and so the they're you know they they want harmony they want external harmony because that really feels good in their system and but what can happen is that we start to give away of ourselves to others to create an external sense of harmony right mm, okay mm-hmm. everybody's like happy good now leave mm-hmm, me alone mm-hmm. but inside what ends up happening is we give away a little bit of ourselves every time yeah. so for harmony keepers the change can be really, it can be difficult because they hate disharmony. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody does to a degree. And then there's some that really don't, don't like disharmony, (laughs) right? It's like, right. I'm going to avoid it at all costs. So, and it's just the reminder, it can totally be done. And it's just another way where we get more masterful at recognizing where our comfort zones are, our likes, our dislikes, but we get more masterful at knowing that the disharmony, when we do choose to make, say yes to ourselves and to take up more space with what we want, what we need, what's the energy that's becoming present and growing inside of us is that the disharmony is very temporary. And if we hold it in a very self-honoring way, relationship dynamics, they shift. And then there's a new uh, landscape of harmony that actually is very inclusive of who we are. Mm, yeah, that's, that feels very harmonic. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's the inner and outer, like harmonic, right. harmonic. Right. That, equilibrium, yeah. that balance. Yeah. That feels really good to me too. So what are some of the most, um, like beautiful shifts in your own life that, that you, you'd like to speak to, you know, that you've been on this, this path, what does it allow opened up for you? I think is what I'm asking you. Like what, what is, Mm. what is that, what is that little gift that you get every time that you, you allow yourself to take up space? What are some of those that you've noticed for yourself? Yeah, for sure. Well, more freedom for sure. Like Mm -hmm. there's always more freedom and more freedom for me and more freedom for the entire family. Although it doesn't always look like that off the bat. Um, I was having a conversation with a client this morning and we were talking about some of these relationship dynamic shifts and how sometimes when we're saying yes to a higher vision that it sometimes feels like we're a burden or a weight on the family. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the the vision that we're holding for collective freedom, for personal freedom, for family freedom, it doesn't show up right away. And so we don't always have like the physical evidence or proof that we have a calling and that it, it's going to be so good and so yummy and work for everyone. <laughs> Let me figure this out. <laughs> um yeah. And so we, I was talking about this with a client and I, and one of the ways that I kind of like landed back into the importance of 
you know, women really anchoring this call to more freedom, whether it's like, you know, emotional freedom, the feminine loves spaciousness. So like time freedom, Mm -hmm. creative freedom, Mm -hmm. um, is by, you know, the womb leads like the womb leads, the womb holds the vision. Yeah. And so it's like, and that's, then that's the nature of the, the feminine is like, it's birthing the vision. And so can we tend to it and, and hold it and anchor it, even when there can be relationship disharmony, I am going somewhere with this <laughs> when there I'm can following be, you. <laughs> okay, perfect. And there's been times where, you know, my partner won't always be on board with this, like, you know, vision or what it is that I want to expand into or where, what I'm um, what I am see- seeing will lead to more freedom and prosperity, right? It can kick up a lot of like, are you sure? Like, do we trust that? Or like, and, and, you know, go into a little bit of that, like security and safety. Mm-hmm. And we can really push up against that. And sometimes I'll buy, I'll fall into it. Like, oh, maybe he's right. And then kind of back down or maybe shrink a little bit and spend some more time with the vision. But every time I trust it and, and bring through more of the vision and all along the way, every time I've trusted it and brought through more, you know, there was a time where it was like that 60 K to six figure mark. And I really wanted to grow and I just wanted to have more supply. And I'd hear some doubt in the background. Of like, Are you sure? And I'm like, I'm sure. <laughs> Anyways, as I would hold it and anchor it and bring it through, you know, there'd be bumps and I'd push up against, you know, some of his programming or some of his poverty consciousness. But when I did ground it and land it, there was ultimately more freedom for all of us. Mm-hmm. It opened, a, yeah, it opened a bigger vision for all of us. So, um, I feel like ultimately that's kind of like one of the the gifts, no matter how small, right? It sometimes in the very beginning, what I see with women and even for myself, creative expression, mm-hmm. freedom and creative expression in the home, like just to take up space with like an altar, like yeah. 10 years ago in, in the home, wherever I wanted it to would have been like, I'm putting this here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just kind of like, but you know, it is, it's part of it, our creative expression, just being able to bring the um, more and more of our uniqueness into the world. Um, it's, it's ultimately like, that's just another layer of, of freedom. So yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that creative expression and the altar thing. Yeah. Those are all over, <laughs> all over. My yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly. Now they're in the backfield. They're like, where, <laughs> wherever. Yeah. yeah. They go for walks. They find little, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Little, little yeah. connections to spirit and the divine. Yeah. So I'm going to not switch gears really, oh, but sure. I, I want to make sure that I talk to you a little bit about, um, this, um, sexually sovereign mother Mm, and how this how this is connected to all that you've been talking about um and where it's going yeah well yeah there's so many really fascinating layers to this for sure and I think if we if we bring it back to kind of like the the holy and the whore archetypes and and Mm -hmm. mother mary and and mary magdalene and that split that we've seen in our consciousness Mm -hmm. and how that most definitely plays out with a lot of like the the programming around our role as mothers and even just through the the history of the feminine you know there was a time where it was like to be pure and virginal um, meant you had more value. You were of more value when you were in childbearing years. And, you know, you were the feminine's primary, um, role would have been to create and birth children, but not necessarily to be embodied in her sexual power. So there's Mm -hmm. like a lot of, you know, layers that we could explore with that, but 
you know, for me and, and I had, you know, what I would refer to like my sexual awakening, probably around the time that I was like 39, 40. And I'd always been pretty sexual and enjoyed sex, but wasn't not to the degree where I could really feel the power of my sexual energy and really like harness that power and really like enjoy my body in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. And that was really powerful to me in terms of, again, how a freedom, Mm -hmm. a freedom in like the joy and the pleasure of my body. And also how I started to get to use and amplify my energy Mm -hmm. to create my vision and Mm -hmm. to live life on my terms. So the sexually sovereign mother is about, yeah, it's about really allowing ourselves to come into our pleasure bodies as women, Mm. to really come home to the womb, to this, to the sexual energies that want to stir and awaken there, and then being able to harness the power of it for us. So I'm, I know I'm sure you know, with, you know, the Akashic training, I've probably said this before, but we come from a history too, where it's like women, when they did have sexual energy, if the masculine wanted it, primarily it was like, okay, (laughs) you get it. (laughs) And we didn't have a lot of like boundaries or sovereignty over how we got to connect to how we got to build, Mm -hmm. how we got to harness and then direct our own sexual creative energy Mm -hmm. right and so that's part of like the sovereignty is that I get to use my own creative sexual energy I get to awaken in my own feminine magic and pleasure and I get to use that to create life on my terms and I think there that becomes another important piece because there's so much in terms of boundaries yeah and yeah how we get to build our energy and how we get to hold our energy. And for moms, you know, right. We're, we often end up actually carrying much more of the home and our masculine, like through organizations and schedules and we're doing and we're giving and oftentimes depleted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. And so it's like another layer of really taking up space in the home right? For what I would call like womb centered leadership in the home is where Mm -hmm. mothers really can hold that higher vision of freedom and where they have the space to connect to self, to build their radiance, Mm -hmm. to drop into the power center of their wombs and to be able to anchor the home and their vision in an entirely different way. Mm. So So that's what that means. (laughs) If you have any other questions or I can keep talking about it. (laughs) Oh, I'd love for you to keep talking, but I I know that I know that you've got things, you've got things brewing for the afternoon here today. Oh, yes, that's true. I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's inevitably Uh, it. And I think it's, you know, that radiant morning power hour for me the whole time. It was that practice of coming home to myself of going deeper into my, into my connection to self of dropping more fully into my body Mm -hmm. of coming into the womb of being able to drop into Yoni and actually even cultivating a new relationship with, with Yoni in the way Mm -hmm. I felt rooted in my feminine vessel. Um, Yeah. And I would say, you know, that's kind of like the awakening journey of, of woman and for mother, this becomes a really important piece because we're starting to bridge those two archetypal energies that have had a split in the consciousness, Mm -hmm. the collective consciousness. And yet it can really, it really shifts how we show up in our leadership and how we get to create and magnetize. And I just imagine it does just, and and at the same time, it just your vitality, right. Which allows you to be more creative. So yeah, I, I have one more question for you and just to kind of maybe tie it together oh, and sure, let yeah. people know, you know, how they can connect with you, yeah. but how does the Akashic records work support all of this? Um, I know many yeah. people don't know, but like, how would you say in a few four, four Well, five for me, yes. Uh, well, the approach that I use is you know, sometimes I take the feminine out of it to try to generalize like my approach a little bit more. And then when I do, I feel like some of the magic is lost. 
Um, but I work with both the Akashic field and the Akashic records. And so, you know, a big part of that method and that process is I can, I start to introduce the Akashic field and I start to introduce, you know, your own, uh, you know, private practice with the Akashic field, this 21 day journey. But to me, the Akashic field is like very much like a very feminine energy. It's like, mm -hmm. it's very like Shakti. It's very creative. It's very intelligent. It's very loving. Mm -hmm. And so then we go in and we do Akashic. We actually start to work with the Akashic records at a very body-based multi-dimensional level. And I forget what your question was. And <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> oh, good. I'm like, am I talking about the Akashic records or was there like another question around there? But, oh, that's it. it here, that's how it connects. Here's that's the how answer. it all connects that's together <laughs> in yes. the body. It right. is about, mm -hmm. we use the Akashic records to really clear out and entangle what doesn't serve a woman's highest expression of freedom, but while also, you know, really starting to awaken her to these codes of love and creation. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. That was, that, that like, was that so oh, perfect. You hit, it. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. So, so how can people um, learn more about your work or, or connect with you? What's going on? Yeah. What are you offering right now? So we have the Flower of Life Akashic Foundation level is now open and, and enrolling. And uh, we begin February 3rd. Okay. So if you want to learn more about that, you can head over to the AkashicWomenSchool.com. I can't excuse me, remember the full URL, but if you go to the school, you can flip the menu down and, and the certification will be right there for you. And um, I think that that's, uh, that's kind of a major focus right now. So we usually take 12 women and we've still got uh, six spots left. So reach out if All that right. speaks to you. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing your, your beautiful women. And I hope that that has um, given everyone some divine inspiration for um, fully embodying their feminine presence here on earth because we need it. So yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Until till next time, everybody have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Divinely Inspired Woman. Again, I am your host, Patricia Wald Hopkins, and I am so glad that you joined us here today. I hope you left with some soul food to inspire your daily life. And if you would like to learn more about my work, please check out my website, patriciawaldhopkins.com, and you can find out... Uh, more about um, my um, divinely inspired um, practice and tools. So thank you again. Have a beautiful day. Hi. I'm dropping in here with a announcement about a program a new mentorship that I am offering. It's called Voices of Gaia. And it's about bringing your voice, your leadership, your life in alignment with Gaia's guidance. So if you feel called to learn more about this program, it's a beautiful, rich program where we dive into your essence. And if you so desire, we develop um, your uh, business around it and really, um, blossom into your whole lifestyle, these, um, this wisdom from Gaia that wants to be spoken through you. So if you feel called, reach out to me at Patricia at PatriciaWaldHopkins.com. That's Patricia at PatriciaWaldHopkins.com. There's no hyphen between Wald and Hopkins. And I would just love to hear from you and see if this is a good fit. So thank you for tuning in. Have a beautiful day.